Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to this session of my NPTEL course, Appreciating Linguistics or Typological Approach. We were talking about syntactic typology. We started the discussion with um, basics of syntax, how syntactic analysis is useful for, for, a, for natural language, be it English, Hindi, Telugu, Tamil, whatever. And then uh, we did find out how the ambiguity can be resolved by using syntactic analysis, how recursion can be explained. We can also find out when we have complex structures and there is uh, there are issues like um, word order. So considering English is a different word order language and Hindi is a different word order language, how, how we need to do the um, syntactic analysis for these things. So on the, uh, like taking this, is this discussion forward um, on the basis of the understanding that we have about basics of uh, um, syntax, I would um, like you to uh, have an understanding uh, or to, to get an idea about syntactic typology. So when I say syntactic typology, primarily I am going to focus on the syntactic differences and similarities among languages. As simple as that. It sounds simple, but it is actually not. I am going to deal with it at a very uh, preliminary level, considering this is an introduction course. Um, so, um, primarily the focus for this unit is going to be syntactic differences and syntactic similarities. And I uh, will primarily get data uh, from Moravzik's book, Introduction to Language and Linguistics, published by Cambridge University Press. And, uh, the, and there is a, there's a huge sample of cross-linguistic generalizations which have been documented in this book and I am going to get my data from there. How I am going to um, like this is kind of the key concepts that I am going to discuss in this section. So um, I will first talk about the cross linguistic similarities and differences in the choice of words and then the word form. So remember there are two different things. One is which language chooses which word and what are the different word forms that the languages choose cross linguistically. That is what going to be my focus for the initial couple of minutes. Then I will talk about the word order. So the or the frequencies of the word order patterns, some kind of statistics I am going to discuss and uh, eventually I will move over to um, the cross linguistic examination of grammatical categories like subject or let us say uh, uh, for example I will talk about the classifiers or I might talk about the resumptive pronouns. So these are a few grammatical categories that I am going to discuss um, to make it palatable to my participants what syntactic typology is. Okay. So to begin with, um, syntax is what? Syntax is the um, technical or the systematic study of sentence structure in any given language. So when we talk about um, sentences, then obviously it is the, the most important thing to remember is that this is the assembling of words. When you have so many lexical items at your disposal, then you need to put it together in such a way that this will give you a complete meaning. That is what a sentence is all about. Sometimes a sentence could be just one word, that is a different story, but then the moment we have a complex or a compound or even a simple sentence with multiple words, our, our uh, focus should be on assembling the words in the right order. So uh, when we are going to deal with uh, these many words in syntactic typology section, so we need to focus on three things. And what are the three things? So we need to find out how languages are similar or languages are different on the basis of the choice of words that they have. Okay? So to read it, I have written down three points here. The choice of words that are used to express a given meaning. So if the languages are similar, what is the choice of words? If they are different, what is the choice of words? Then the second thing is, not only the choice of words, the similarities and differences under the category of typology should also be studied on the basis of the choice of word forms. And what are these forms? These forms which are used to express a particular meaning or a given meaning. And after we found out the choice of words, and the choice of word forms in relation with typology, we are going to focus on the order of words. So which word should occur after what or before what so that the meaning can be expressed properly. Right? So these are the three things that 
um, that is going to be discussed in this section. So, to repeat or to help you to reiterate, first choice of words, second choice of word forms and third order of words. So, on the basis of these three parameters, I am going to talk about or I am going to give you an idea how typologically languages are different. Okay? We will start from uh, the first tool that we have in hand um, that is choice of words. So, here we have considered uh, again taking the data from Murabzik's uh, um, book Introduction to Language and Linguistics published by Cambridge University Press. Uh, it is a fairly new book which has been comprehensive as far as uh, descriptive data is concerned and there has been a lot of samples uh, from different world's languages. So, this data set talks about or this data set, set deals with four different languages English, serbo croatian then Russian and then Arabic. So, now let us see how the choice of words are different. Okay? So, when I say I am a student, this is the sentence here is the serbo croatian um, counterpart, then we have the Russian counterpart and then we have the Arabic counterpart. So, let us see how um, typologically these languages are similar or different. So, what is it? When you look at the choice of words, English contains four words each. I am a student, you are a student, he is a student. right? So, in all the three constructions, we see there are four words each. However, in the second center or in the second language which has been listed here, the number of selection of lexical items or the words are three. In case of English, it is four, in case of Serbo Croatian, it is three, and uh, uh, going to the third language which has been discussed, Russian that has only two, right? And how about Arabic? Arabic is also again having two different uh, like two two different words. Um, to say the same sentence or to represent the same sentence, I am a student, second sentence you are a student and the third sentence he is a student. Okay? So, if we look at this pattern typologically, since we are going to like we are talking about syntactic typology, which one seems to be closer to what? First language which we have in hand English, four words. Second language, Serbo Croatian, we have three words, Russian we have two words and Arabic also has two words. right? So, considering um, these two or considering this list of languages or the samples that we that we have in hand uh, that we have in hand, it seems Russian is closely related to what? As far as the number of words is number of words is concerned, it might be related to Arabic, but then if you look at uh, uh, look at the the verbal form, or if you if you look at the let's say English and Serbo Croatian examples. Okay, l let's start from um, let's start one by one. Okay, going by the number of words, Russian and Arabic are closure. And what are the differences? The differences are in English and Serbo Croatian. You can see there are like I am a student. So this is ja or ya sham student. So, in this case um, you see that this sounds to be or this seems to be a bit similar as far as phonological representations are concerned. Okay? So, what happens in these two the first and the second language English and Serbo Croatian um, there is a verb to be which is known as copula. Right? So, copula is present in English and Serbo Croatian, but it is see it seems to be missing in Russian and Arabic. Okay? Considering it, it seems to be missing, so then Russian and Arabic they tend to go towards one direction and English and Serbo Croatian uh, tend to go to the other direction. However, they are not that similar. Okay? Um, it is it's da, it's that in Arabic the verb to be seems to be missing. Okay? Yeah. So, if this seems to be missing in this case, then there you, you see there is a there is a bit of pattern. The pattern which has been drawn or the pattern which you are able to identify is based on the number of words that it has. But as far as the lexical items or the verb form that is concerned, English and Serbo-Croatian uh, they seem to be 
uh, going a bit closer to each other, right? Or, um, uh, but if you look at Russian and Arabic, though the number of words that remain same, but uh, in case of the grammatical categories that it has, it does not seem to be much of similarity. Okay? So, um, these are these are the things we need to we need to keep in mind when we were talking about the choice of words. Some languages might choose more number of words, some languages might choose fewer number of words. Sometimes it could be um, sometimes a copula could be mandatorily required to express a sentence like I am a student, it is identificational sentence, but it may not be required um, for languages like let us say Russian. So, it may not be required in that sense. Okay? Um, also the tense feature, the tense feature could be different. I do not have the data here, but then um, there are also languages like let us say let us consider um, Hungarian. Hungarian is a language which does not have copula in such kind of constructions. Um, and uh, on the other hand, we have Cantonese Chinese. Uh, in this case, um, it could be it could be simply simply like an adjective. When you say I am a student um, in Chinese, it may not need a copula, but a simple adjectival um, adjectival lexical item is going to be okay uh, to express such meanings. Okay, so these are the these are the different ways by which or these are the different things by which we can claim that the choice of words that uh, makes the languages typologically similar or different. Okay? So, it depends on the, um, on the number, it also depends on the kind of lexical item that the languages choose. Okay? And um, also the, the tense pattern that, that remains varied from language to language, but eventually you have to remember that both the things have to be taken care of. So, uh, what is what like quantitatively how many words have been used and then which form of the word has been used. So, the next thing or the next discussion is going to be based on the choice of word forms. So, just by going or just by going through the choice of words is not limited to the typological research, rather we need to find out besides the choice of words, we can also think about the choice of word forms to decide on the typology of uh, the samples of languages that we have. Okay? So, the next slide is about cross linguistic differences related to choice of word forms. Okay? Further or next we are moving to the choice of word forms, but let me just um, summarize what we discussed in choice of words. So, we had four languages at languages at our disposal, we had English, we had Serbo-Croatian, we have Russian and then we have Arabic where we saw that English and Serbo-Croatian, they seem to uh, be a little close to each other as far as the use of copula is concerned or the am kind of like is, am, are sort of things are concerned. So, they seem to be typologically similar, whereas Russian and Serbo-Croatian which are both are Slavic languages, ideally they should show similar kind of features, but in, in this particular instance, Russian and Arabic, they seem to go together. Uh, without deploying the copula. Okay? So, that is about the, um, the typology or syntactic type typology based on the tool that we have in hand, the choice of words. With this, we will move to the next criteria or the next parameter that is the choice of word forms. So, uh, which form of word um, do languages choose so that we can put them um, in a category called type. Okay? So, let us say x type or y type or a type or b type. So, uh, just we did for the other two languages or the four languages, here we have another sample, we have English, we have Japanese, then we have Spanish and then we have Swahili. Okay? So, um, here we see English and Japanese, these are unrelated languages. Okay? And uh, considering these are unrelated languages, Okay. So, um, English and Japanese are unrelated languages. So, the let us see how the adjectives are going to be uh, studied here, because the, the example that we have taken here is small spoon. So, that is uh, small spoon singular, small spoons plural. Then we have small child singular and small children plural. 
So, we are going to find out whether the singular and plural they have the same adjective or different adjectives. So, typologically we are which two languages or three languages or all four of them they belong to the same category or the same type. Um, if you look at the data carefully you will see let us analyze the data let us study the data it's, if not analysis let us just study the data carefully. So, here you see um, in English and in Chinese there is a there is one similarity and one difference. So, what is the similarity? No matter whether it is whether the noun is spoon or the child both English and Japanese use similar adjective. It is small for spoon as well as the as well as child. So, whether it is a uh, human or non-human or animate or inanimate the adjective remains same in both the languages. English as well as Chinese. In Chinese this is thesai and in English this is small. So, whether it is uh, what no matter whatever might be the um, might be the um, the noun the adjective is same, but does the story remain same for Spanish and Swahili not really. If you look at Spanish for uh, for the inanimate noun the adjective is different and for the animate noun or human noun the adjective is different. For spoon they have this kushar or whatever kuchar and for a child they have nin right. So, Spanish seems to be different and Swahili has a very different story to tell. So, what happens in Swahili? Um, here you see um, when it is uh, when it is a non um, let me let me put it in this way when it is an inanimate object like spoon there are two different adjectives and for a for a human child or for a for a human form or for a human noun the adjectives are different. So, we need to find out what is the correlation between plurality and the use of adjective plus the kind of noun that we have how typologically they are going to be different ok. Um, so, type like if, if we look at the kind of language families that we have in hand English and Japanese they are absolutely unrelated they are they are not related, but in case of the deployment of adjectives they seem to behave similarly right. So, they have one adjective for both animate and inanimate. For Spanish it is what is the what which which lexical item decides the use of adjective it is the noun. So, with an with an inanimate noun the adjective is something else and with an animate noun or a human, a human noun the adjective is something else. However, in the category of Swahili we see both the plurality and adjective they are different on the basis of the even like all the three things are uh, are working. So, we are um, when it is a when it is an inanimate object like spoon spoon singular the adjective is ki spoon plural the adjective is v. So, that means here the difference in the adjective is also related to the singular and the plural things. Same is the case with the second one when it is child which is human agent or like which is human noun the adjective is m, m and when it is children the uh, the ob like the adjective is going to be wa. So, Swahili is typologically very different Spanish is somewhere in the middle like the type 2 and English and Japanese they can be put under uh, one category. Though they are different as far as language families are concerned at least on the basis of the use of adjective that uh, like English and Japanese they seem to behave similarly in this construction ok. There we saw um, how the adjectives are going to be different on the basis of the uh, proper like the feature of the noun um, whether this is animate or inanimate singular or plural. Some languages they do not discriminate on any of these, some languages discriminate only on the animacy features and some languages like Swahili 
they differentiate it or they have different, uh, they, they deploy different adjectives not only on the basis of the animacy features, but also on the basis of the um, singular or the plural things like the uh, number features. Okay? So, English and Japanese would behave similarly as far as adjectives are concerned. So, they are in one type, um, Swahili is going to be on the extreme end and then we have Spanish which is there in the middle of it. Okay? Um, but one thing that you need to notice uh, in case of Japanese is that um, it does not have any difference between singular and plural in case of the uh, inanimate um, noun. So, when it is small spoon and small spoons, look at the data here. The data is same or for the, uh, the, the words that we use that is same for both singular and plural. However, with child versus children, they have a different plural marker that is tati I think. So, kodomo uh, and then kodomo tati, tati seems to be the plural marker, but that is not the story with um, the inanimate nouns. So, there are subtle differences and there are subtle similarities, but at least English and Japanese they do share some kind of similarity with only one difference we are going to put them almost in the same type though um, they belong to two different language families. In case of Spanish, um, the differences are only on the basis of the animacy features, but in case of Swahili, the differences are both on animacy as well as number features. So, that is one way of understanding um, typology um, on the basis of the choice of word forms. Here is another example like another set of data. We have, uh, let us do a comparative analysis um, among three languages. One is English, then we have German or four languages in fact. We have English, then German, French and Russian, right. Um, the first sentence in English is I follow him and look at the German example, uh, I follow then he dative um, and in case of English the, the second uh, instance of the second example we have dissatisfied with something and here is the French counterpart and three boys here is the Russian counterpart. Okay. Now, let us see what do these differences show um, as far as grammatical case is concerned. Um, in case of uh, English, German, French and Russian, um, you look at it the case marking is slightly different. In German, it is going to be dative, the object is dative marked. Uh, in case of uh, uh, English also it is the same, but then if you look at the three boys in English, here the Russian uh, example that we have, it has a genitive marking. So, let us see what is happening here. In English, the verb to follow takes the direct object case. So, him is the direct object case, which is the, which is the accusative case. Okay? But in case of German, if you compare it, it takes the indirect object case, which is the dative case, right. So, when I follow him, him is accusative marked, but when you say it is the same sentence in German, it is him is the dative marked. So, typologically the case marking is a little different here, okay. The what is the, what is the other thing that is specific about English? as far as the adjectives are concerned. The first one is the case marking type, uh, case marking features. The second one is related to the, uh, to the adjectives. So, in English um, example that we have, the adjective dissatisfied, it requires an instrumental marker. So, instrumental marker means with, I open the lock with the key. So, with is the instrumental marker. However, the, its French counterpart does not need an instrumental marker, rather what does it need? There is a genitive marking, right. So, instead of saying dissatisfied with something with an instrument with, here we have de which is the genitive um, case marking. Okay? So, um, the adjective in the first case which is English, it requires instrumental preposition, sorry pro, uh, an instrumental preposition and in French it requires dative, um, sorry genitive preposition. 
So, there is a difference out here. Now, come to um, Russian in case of the numeral. Okay. In English, the numeral that we have is three boys. Okay. So, three boys in, in, in English, it has the subject form of the noun. That means, null nominative. It does not have the overt nominative mark or the overt nominative marker. But in case of Russian, the noun that follows three, it has to be genitive case. So, see there is a there is a distinct difference between English and all the three languages uh, which have been shown here. So, let us recap, let us let us find out what we discuss. In case of English, in a construction like I follow him, it is the direct object and it is marked with accusative. Its German counterpart is getting dative. The second example, the adjective has a has an instrumental preposition. In French, the similar kind of example, the adjective has a genitive preposition. In English, the numeral seems to have subject form, which is null nominative marked. However, in case of Russian, it is genitive marked. Okay. So, uh, now what kind of generalization that we are going to draw? So, in these cases, um, German, French and Russian, this considering they deploy different kind of cases, they are going to be syntactic, like their syntactic typology is going to be different. Okay. Um, so, in case of uh, um, in case of let us say, let us go back to the to the old example that we have. Um, in such cases, when we have multiple uh, or when we have different types of case markings, we need to find out these case forms, they are dictated by other words which do not reflect the form of governing words. So, what is government? We are going to talk about it later if we have time, but just remember cross linguistically, we are going to encounter many such differences even within the languages which belong to um, same language family for instance English and German right so considering English and German um, they they belong to the same language family in case of the case marking they are different so let's go back to our the, the, the primary objective of this unit to find out the cross linguistic similarities as well as differences. There must be some similarity which is why English and German they belong to the same language family. But within like in spite of the similarities that they have, we can also highlight the differences that these languages have on the basis of the case system or the case marking. Okay? Mm -hmm.